Alan James has had a fantastic year racing his Mazda RX-7. He's won his class in the state hill climb series uh, at his first attempt at it. And to top off his year, he's going to do one of the things on his bucket list, and certainly on mine and probably on yours as well. He's going to run Mount Panorama Bathurst two days, the full circuit, at a regularity trial. He's making a number of adjustments to the car, gearing it up for Bathurst. Well, he's, he's literally gearing it up for Bathurst. He does 230 kilometres an hour on Sydney's Eastern Creek track going into Turn 1, and Conrod straight at Bathurst, well, he'll be going even faster. So he's put a taller diff ratio in it, and he's making another other changes to it. The speed that he's going to be doing, well, I don't want to think about it. It's going to be a serious case. With the rate of knots that we know he's going to be doing, aerodynamics definitely come into play. Now, we're not aerodynamic engineers. We haven't got a wind tunnel, which is guys working in a garage probably like most of you are. But there's three things I'm going to do that we know will improve the performance of this car and the flow through the air at those sorts of speeds. These aren't mods for show or for road cars. They're for serious cars that race on the track. These are the plastic inner linings off the mudguards, the factory component. And as you can see, uh, white tyres tend to catch and rub them. So what a lot of guys do, uh, who do a bit of track work with masters, is they take them off. The problem with that is it lets all the dirt into the engine bay here. So what we've done is I've made up fiberglass short versions that just go on the front. They keep the dirt out of the engine bay and they give more room for the race tyres on the uh, back two thirds of the wheel arch. But this also means that the air is not going out the wheel arch, but rather it's going in behind the back of the guard and the air piles up here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to sculpt this uh, mud guard and put vents in it and then take a mould off it and I'm going to make a fibreglass mould so that I can produce these that will just be dropping components. So all we'll need to do is cut out a hole in the mudguard and drop them in. Those vents will allow the air to escape. These are not cosmetic mods, they're not for styling, they're genuine aerodynamic to let the air out of the cars. So that's two things we're doing, changing the inner guards and venting them. You don't have to be a rocket surgeon to know that at high speed air travelling underneath your car hits all those valleys and mechanical bits of suspension and a muffler system and all those pockets with the air going into it uh, puts drag on the cars. If you can put a smooth bottom on the car and stop the wind catching in all those places you're going to make the car slip through the air better at high speed. Agreed? So we've decided to skin the entire underneath of the car and, uh, and put, give it a smooth floor. James has cut out the first template out of uh, thin MDF sheeting, and that's going to be our die. And my suggestion, James has put a bit of 3B1 skirting down the middle, because this is going to be the side that we're actually going to uh, lay up the, uh, the panel off, and having this in the middle of it, with the wind going that way, won't add any drag, but it will add strength and stop the sheeting underneath the car wobbling and vibrating. And he's also added these overlap flanges, which will allow him to bolt uh, the various pieces together. This is only one of four pieces. I'll show you the whole setup in a moment. But this will allow these flanges will allow the sheets to bolt to one another, and uh, and give it, and yet still retain the smooth design. So what are we going to make these underfloor panels out of? Given that the cost needs to be affordable and reasonable at our level of racing. Well, you could make them out of tin, uh, that would be heavy and I think it would tend to vibrate and be noisy. You could make them out of fibreglass. Uh, fibreglass is ch certainly cheap, a little bit on uh, the heavy side compared to other composites that are available, but certainly strong enough, could do the job. Everybody would say, ah, oh, Make them out of carbon fibre, Bill. Love their stuff. Well, the problem with carbon fibre, apart
apart from its horrific expense, is that when it takes an impact, it tends to just fragment and explode. So it's not really suitable for an underfloor. What you really need is this stuff, Kevlar. The stuff that bulletproof vests are made out of. This stuff is almost impossible to cut with scissors when you're trying to cut it out for a job. It's really fine and hairy. Uh, stops bullets, it'll certainly stop stone chips. I priced making the whole floor out of Kevlar, but it was too expensive. So I'm going to break a rule of fiberglassing. Some composite purists will tell you you can't combine, or you shouldn't combine, uh, Kevlar and fiberglass. Why? Because fiberglass uses polyresins and Kevlar gets its greatest strengths when you use epoxy resins. But I've made stacks of car parts over the years from fiberglass, reinforcing the edges so that they won't tear on things like mudguards and spoilers. Uh, and I've used these two materials together and I've just used fiberglass resin. Oh, what's he doing? Well, it works perfectly. I've been doing it for 10 years. I've had no dramas with it. So that's what we're going to make the floor pans out of. I'm going to use one layer of Kevlar, which will be the bottom layer, the layer closest to the ground. That will make it you know, impervious to stone chips. And if there's an off-track excursion, it'll resist tearing. And then two layers of fiberglass for strength. That's what we're going to make it out of. So here's the entire four panel floor underskin that we're going to make. Four panels that will bolt together. That one's the front. You can see the wheel arch openings going all the way to the back. The first thing I have to do to be able to lay up Kevlar on this is to seal it. was a flat panel you'd probably just cut the outline out and bend that whole piece down and add a new um, face to the vent uh, through there but because this is a curved panel at this point what I'm going to do instead is cut out the flap that I'll bend down to make the hole where the air is going to come out and this piece here uh, because of that curvature, I'm going to make cuts this way and I'll probably put a replacement piece of metal in each of the vents there as I'm sculpting this. That way I've just got a flat piece of metal and I'm curving it, whereas this has got too many curves in it to try and straighten up. The second series of cuts will follow this tape that I've put in, so they'll, I'll keep that piece of metal there, which I'll bend down to make the sides of the scoops on either side.
I've cut out and shaped the factory metal as much as I can and uh, where I've got this tape I need to strengthen these points because it's coming down almost nothing so I'll flip this over and put some carbog bog on the back and strengthen that and then I can add the new metal in there I've mixed fiberglass hairs into the carbog that'll give this more strength than if I just use carbog 